Darkcast Network, indie pods with a dark side. Listening to Castles and Cryptids, where the castles are haunted and the cryptids are cryptic as fuck. And I'm Alana. <laughs> I'm Kelsey. And we're back again, baby. How'd you like the vampire yeah. lore? <laughs> I liked. I like the picture you chose. Is it Bella Lugosi? Okay, good. Just... Yeah, I went back and forth on doing it, but I really liked it. <laughs> I. That was me going, oh, yeah, it's Thursday, and I should make sure I've edited my half if we're splitting it, and then going, wait, did, texting you, did you do it? And then looking again and being like, oh, there's the episode ready to be scheduled, because you were yeah. the one that told me, yeah, you could definitely schedule them, yeah. and I just realized I had to scroll down further. <laughs> yeah, it's a little Let's weird. See. You have to, like, it says, like, <laughs> Gordo, the fuck, what are I you doing that. right now? Jesus Christ. Humping the computer? <laughs> no, he just like dive bombed the box of Kleenex I have behind the computer. Like he was just gonna claw, cr- climb inside it. Um, oh buddy. my god. Your shenanigans. You do not yeah. fit in that box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's Holy weird shit. scheduling it because it says it's enabled and disabled or yeah whatever yeah it's a little weird i just kind of clicked around the first time i did it and i was like oh i guess this is how you do it but it seems like you're doing something bad to it i don't know (laughs) are you sure you want to allow this you're like uh yeah (laughs) yes please yeah Yeah, and then also sometimes that everything on the screen when you're making an episode of doing the uh, um show notes the description whatever i'm like it's all very dark it's like black yeah. and like white text on black and then it's like this i feel like it's this little corner tiny window that i'm typing in like you know when you pop up to do like an email or something it just does like and i'm like no wonder i make typos yeah. all the damn time i'm doing it like half in the dark <laughs> i'm like yeah. don't have my laptop i should probably have it right up to my face i'm like this is the... and the font i find good. is very very small like it's tiny yes and I'm trying to read it. So I was typing it up, I think, on the, like, post-it notes on the computer. Like, the electronic post-it notes you can have. I was typing okay. it on there while I was listening to the editing. Um, mm. Like, the second half, I was kind of, like, typing up the episode description. I just copied and pasted it into there. Nice. So, That's smart. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, having I, a separate I, word page open. Yeah. Yeah. Gordo, <laughs> you are going to get evicted come on he's ready to push my laptop almost into my lap because he's laying behind it <laughs> buddy that's why it keeps <laughs> vibrating <laughs> yeah i told you that he was already being weird tonight and it's continuing i don't know what he was what's going on <laughs> and i told you that yeah, I watched people basically dressed up like the full version of cats on the D&D thing, and they were like, I'm yeah. a cat getting in your way! And I was like, yep, this is recording with cats! This is exactly what it's like. Yeah, he's trying to <laughs> Shoving like, play, things with off. This, play with the stuff I have on my desk here. It's like, breakable. <laughs> Buddy, no, stop it. You're gonna get hit. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, shit. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, I tell well, you. <laughs> welcome to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll add no. out uh, as much cat shenanigans as I can as, <laughs> as he keeps damn. pushing on your damn screen. Um, cat lovers of the world, you know how it is. Um, pretty Litter, sponsor us. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody help us. <laughs> uh, oh, we're fine. Yeah, something. <laughs> yeah. Um, happy spooky season. Yay. I think this is our like second October episode. <laughs> yeah. And we are getting into it, baby. <laughs> hey. Stop it. 
Gordo is currently possessed. I wish, because then I could do an exorcism and he <laughs> he would go back to normal, but unfortunately. <laughs> so I will throw you out. Hey. He needs a cat scan. Did you see him jump at me? Sort of. It was Toby. Jesus. <laughs> you just like see a blur and then he's like, oh, God. He tried to attack my arm. <laughs> Jumped up off the floor oh. at me, sitting in the chair. Jesus, what? Well, you're wearing a very appropriate shirt. It says "pause" in the Jaws style. It is. <laughs> oh, maybe I dun, maybe I brought dun. this on myself. <laughs> Gonna need a bigger podcast closet. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. All right. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> the vampire lore and today it's gonna be it's it's uh, a horrific horror adjacent movie adjacent yeah. and true crimey something for everybody really <laughs> yeah I, I think we did this a couple years ago i don't think we did it necessarily last yeah. year uh, no, I had to look way back when I was looking because I thought that my yeah. case sounded so familiar that I was like, when did we do that? And it was like, if it wasn't 2022, it was 2021. It was a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sorry. <laughs> and now the the town that dreaded sundown is actually on, is it Prime or Disney Plus? It keeps recommending it to me. <laughs> Oh, like, okay, because Kelsey's last one was Texarkana Moonlight Murders. Yeah. We're doing horror movie crimes. Yeah. Yay. So, <laughs> uh, I was like, and people had told me there was like unnecessary, was it like a rape or something in the movie um, that didn't happen in any of the cases? So, oh, in people that were way. Like, yeah, okay. the, yeah, like the movie isn't the best thing to watch if you're like interested in the case. So I've I've never like watched it because I'm like, oh, oh, I don't really. Okay. Whatever they changed changed some stuff, and it's like, eh, okay, if it's not gonna be like mostly similar, then like, kind of, what's the point? Yeah, yeah. Also, if you don't watch horror movies to be somewhat uncomfortable, like I don't know. <laughs> why are you yeah. watching them there but it's like ugh, yeah that's not always not always something people want or need to sit through <laughs> that's for yeah. sure yeah um i actually I like oh, losing oh, his shit i don't know if he was in the kitchen or living room but i just heard him wailing and sprinting around like a crazy thing <laughs> <gasps> Oh my god, your screen just froze and you were like this. <laughs> okay. Um that kind of reminded me of a weird thing I heard in another podcast, but the only thing it has to do with is that this person was um pretending that their backstory was like <laughs> they were it was like a Stephen King movie plot. It was like stand by <laughs> by me or something, and they were like, I got bullied and I showed them up and then we found a body or something. And immediately oh, the hosts were like, oh my god, and you were written by Stephen King. And I was like, what? And I didn't get it. But like, oh, that was yeah. her thing. She said that most people didn't know she was making like a reference. And they all just like, especially nowadays, they're like, you got bullied? That's so bad. <laughs> but she wanted to like update it for, because it was her like go-to icebreaker. They only deal with the most bizarre problems that aren't Damn. too traumatic. <laughs> it's jake yeah. johnson and his comedian friend giving advice so like <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're underqualified okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh it's weird i tell you anyway write us in with your weird conundrums because i will not judge them and i will try and help you yeah but i, I will laugh a little <laughs> and it's uh spooky season if you guys have uh like personal ghost stories you can send that our way too maybe we'll oh, read them yeah. ghost uh, stories, on air and get glitch in the matrix in episode. yeah anything high strangeness brush with true crime people forget about that that's a good 
yeah. listener story topic. Yep. Yeah, we'd love all Unless, that kind of stuff this yeah. spooky October. Unless you're just like, a stranger talked to me, and so I was probably almost human trafficked and kidnapped. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. No. <laughs> that was just a weird lady on a bench. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Human trafficking, the myth of true crime. It's the freaking, I wrote down to myself one time, this is the mass hysteria of true crime. Apparently it's just like blown so out of proportion, but um, you're wrong sure about his couple of episodes about it. Yeah. Okay. They're, yeah. But, like the statistics just are like, people just are always like, this state is bad for human trafficking and this place is terrible because, you know, you're in an airport so they could take you off anywhere. And it's like, airports the most controlled places around nowadays like no <laughs> I don't think yeah so. I find isn't it you're more likely to get involved or like put in that position by somebody you know uh or like a friend that gets you involved or anything than it is strangers kidnapping you and that kind of stuff so yeah like these big big rings were like taken like the movie taken where people get like yeah brought or or you know taken in other countries or whatever it's just not really like nothing to back it up there i guess but <laughs> yeah <not laughs> anyway <really>. yeah <laughs> uh we're here to deal with some straight up um <laughs> crimes easy to find the culprits in these ones so i think it's gonna be good and... yeah mine was definitely pretty easy <laughs> to figure good. out who did it <laughs> no it's nice uh... when they're like solved <laughs> so yeah this one i thought was fitting with um i thought it was funny because we just did what after we did the pirate episode you had a your next couple of cases were about pirates and now mine are about <laughs> vampires so I oh no i was like oh like, oh fitting that this is the case i chose right after the vampire lore uh we just like, i chose accidentally them. become hyper fixated on a topic yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, I don't know. So this is. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. I thought it was. You can you can t ask Pat if he he knows about it too because this was oh. Alan Menzies, who is twenty two. Um, okay. it was just a couple of years before the crime happened when in two thousand two. The movie Queen of the Damned came out, which is the uh, sequel to Interview with yes. a Vampire. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, features, it is, I guess. yeah, features rock star Lestat, um, played by not <laughs> uh, Tom Cruise. And <laughs> <laughs> anti, the anti Tom. Yes. Um, yeah, Pat I does like his Anne Rice. <laughs> yeah i believe i've seen queen of the damned i don't think i own it but i'm pretty sure oh, i've really? seen the movie once a long time ago um don't i remember think that was the only movie it. i snuck into <laughs> really <laughs> <With my> friend <laughs> jesse because <laughs> no. that's the one with Aaliyah, right the singer before she got killed yeah 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 she yeah. plays akasha <laughs> Uh yeah, so yeah. this um this Alan Menzies, he was twenty-two and his best friend at the time, twenty-one year old Thomas McKendrick, uh introduces him to the movie. And uh Alan and Thomas had known each other since Alan was four years old. So like they have been long time, like really good friends, best friends. Okay, okay. Yeah, almost 20 <laughs> years. And the two had to see where this is going. <laughs> not a good place. <laughs> no, no, but I'm like, wait, <laughs> what is happening? Okay. The two grew up together in Fault House, West Lothian, Scotland. Is that <gasps> West? Is that? Probably. I don't know. Okay. I was like, I I'm I've I I I only read it, it too, I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I say it in my head. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, the <laughs> synopsis for the Queen of the Damned movie, because I had to look it up again. Um, so this is what it says. One of the synopsis, at least. Follows the legendary vampire Lestat, who has reinvented himself as a rock star in the contemporary American music scene. 
His music awakes Akasha, the queen of all vampires, and inspires her desire to make Lestat her king. Akasha's malevolent power is so great that all the immortal vampires must stand against her if they want to survive. Meanwhile, a young (laughs) London woman with a fascination for the dark side falls in love with Lestat. I don't remember that plot line, but... (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure she's one of many. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah. Okay, yes. The rock theme. It's coming back to me. I'm yeah. Still like, wait, what is based on this or what is this based off of? I can't wait. <laughs> uh, so after watching Queen of the Damned, after he was introduced to it, um, Alan becomes very, very obsessed with it. He watches the movie more than a hundred times, sometimes even up to three times a day. Like he's no. obsessed specifically with like the whole movie, but like specifically with Akasha. Um Oh boy. Even if it's a good movie, that's not That's a lot. <laughs> I mean, there's a there's a couple movies I've probably seen almost <laughs> fifty times, yeah. but I would never watch it more than once a day. I mean, yeah. What's the point? <laughs> it's like... uh, yeah. I mean, there's certain, like, Christmas movies that maybe your family has seen dozens and dozens of times. You kind of just, like, put them on repeat in the background. So maybe you catch it. It's on two or three times a day, but nobody's actively watching it and sitting there paying attention (laughs) to it. No, no. And this, yeah, it gets to the point where you can watch a show too much like that, too, where Pat's put on (sighs) Modern Family so so often now that I'm like, Oh, yeah, I can recite these lines. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, yeah. <laughs> so after watching this movie so many times, Alan becomes convinced that Akasha is speaking to him and that he is needed uh, to make a sacrifice to her in order for him to become immortal. So, oh. Yeah. Okay. That's and, where his brain went. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alan at this time began calling himself Leon after a character from the movie as well. So like started asking people to call him Leon. Damn. <laughs> this has changed him. Yeah. Uh so we'll get to kind of what ends up happening after, but uh it's just kind of one day out of nowhere when the what would he be like 23 um yeah i think he like 21 year old thomas his friend just goes missing and he was last seen visiting alan on december 11 2002 and oh no yeah okay uh that that day Alan's father had come home and he noticed like spots of blood all around the house and when he asked Alan about it Alan told his dad that he had cut himself on a can and that just like had never Hmm. managed to get blood all over my house (laughs) all over slicing my finger a little bit but okay but you're not a man and you clean up after yourself (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, we jump ahead to January fourth when Thomas's clothes are found in a bag on the moors, and uh, two days later, police are searching Alan Menzies' home, mm. where they find a lot of, or uh, they find videos, including the Queen of the Damned movie. Um, they find one of the Vampire Chronicles books, Blood and Gold, um, which I think Ooh, is one of title. Marius's books. Um, Who? Marius. He's Armand's oh. maker. Um, Ooh. Yeah. I did watch uh, the, I swear, I know sometimes, I watched the interview with the Vampire <laughs> Show. Um, it was good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so they find (laughs) the Vampire Chronicles book, Blood and Gold, with various passages handwritten 
um, that he had kind of like scribbled in the margins, including he had written, The blood is the life. I have drunk the blood and it shall be mine, for I have seen horror. Oh. Like, yeah, interesting. Okay. I don't <laughs> even know. Vision. I'm sorry. <laughs> right? Like, what do you say to that? Uh, like... I could critique him on the writing, maybe. No, I don't know. <laughs> right. I have seen the horror. Or I have seen horror. It's not uh, bad. So... I would maybe, like, add eldritch horror. Ooh. <laughs> Adds another layer. <laughs> uh, so the police, obviously, they want to talk to Alan. Uh, and they do. I Nothing really talks about what they talk about. Um mm. Or anything that goes down with that. But I guess it kind of spooked him. Because he ends up uh, kind of ending up in the hospital after he talks to the police. Because he takes an overdose of drugs. Um, mm. They didn't say, like, what kind. So, Damn. yeah. And then cuts to about two weeks later. When on January 18th, they end up finding the remains of... The friend Thomas McKendrick uh, in a shallow grave, and this mm. is where it gets crazy because he he was viciously attacked. Um, oh no! Yeah, like I can't imagine doing this to somebody, and then the motivation is so weird. So the pathology report revealed that Thomas had been hit in the head. They believe at least six times with a hammer-like instrument, and then he had been stabbed in the face, head, and body at least 42 times. Which oh, is wow. Right? Like, that's a lot. Um, Talk about yeah. a, a frenzy? Like, overkill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, they also said that the attack had been carried out over a very prolonged period of time, um, which I haven't mm -hmm. heard too often, so I don't know exactly how long they're talking about. But, yeah. You know, I mean, surely not he good. was <clears throat> dead before it was over. Wow. I can only hope. Yeah. Um, so, Alan ends up pleading guilty to uh, culpable homicide on the grounds of diminished capacity. Um, he kind of just tries to say that he <laughs> is mentally ill, uh, but the Crown rejects his plea, and he ends up going to stand trial in October of 2003. Um, and that's kind of where more information comes out. Uh, there isn't a whole lot on this case, but... Okay. I guess during the trial, Alan, who had become known at that point as the vampire killer, which kind of makes it sound like he kills vampires, but no. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. Why? Okay. <laughs> yeah. He told the court that he had been ordered to kill or like make a sacrifice by Akasha. And he tried to convince the jury that he was mentally ill when he had attacked his best friend. Uh, because I guess Thomas and their other friend, Stuart e Unwin, uh, he claimed that they were plotting to kill him. Which is, there's been like a few things that he said about why he did it. So one of them is that they were plotting to kill him and that's why he killed uh, Thomas first. Oh, um, like, okay. Yeah. Well, that's um, less about the mental thing. <laughs> like, right? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, his defense painted him as a person with a vivid fantasy life. And he himself said that after watching the movie, he developed that alter ego, which I think is supposed to be Leon, um, who was really to blame for Thomas's death. And he said that he wished he had never even seen the movie and that Thomas had never introduced him to it. Because it was Thomas that introduced him to it. Well. <laughs> it's like there's... he didn't make you get obsessed with it and watch it a yeah. hundred times. People always be trying to blame movies. And 
or right? I heard a case the other day where like a literal sheriff or someone was like, "You must have read some crazy book." It's like, and then killed people. <laughs> I've never read that crazy of a book that made me want to go right? on a murderous rampage. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, stupid. Uh, the defense even suggested, oh, the defense was suggesting that Alan suffered from paranoid schizophrenia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something, delusions, maybe? Another kind of, so like the first one is that uh, Thomas and this other friend, Stuart Unwin, were planning to kill him. Then the Mm. next thing he kind of says is that on the day of the killing, Alan claims that Thomas had made an insulting remark about the movie, as well as Akasha, his his favorite character, and that Alan had snapped. And he told the court that he had attacked Thomas with a Bowie knife, and then a kitchen knife, and then a hammer. Uh, Oh my god. So, like, that's the other version he said, is that he insulted the movie, and that's why he killed him. (sighs) Well... I've also seen people great. get pretty vicious over opinions on the internet, but my guess yeah. is taking it to another it's a physical lot. level. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Um, That's quite a motive. Yeah, then he goes on to say some other weird stuff. I believe this was all said in court. Uh, that after killing Thomas, Alan said that he had drunk some of his blood and ate part of his skull before he buried the body in the shallow grave. Which, um, gross, don't do that. Skull? That yeah, how do you eat part of a skull? <laughs> yeah. Brush it up, I would hope. Are you going to be good, Gordo? Oh. Can you lay down? Weirdly, people did used to make medicines, quote unquote, with corpse materials yeah. but not in 2002 <laughs> oh. not not really no um, <laughs> during court i thought this was interesting because it's never really mentioned again but during court alan suddenly claimed that his father who is also named thomas <laughs> um. uh and that's so his dad thomas and stewart's father had actually been the ones to dispose of the body. Which, wild, to just suddenly say that in court, just like, out of nowhere. And previously this had not been told to the police, he said, because he wanted to protect his dad. But it also seems very weird if that is true, because, like, why would Stuart's father help you? Anyway? And Stuart was... which one? Stuart was just the other guy that he earlier claimed was also going to kill him, but he only, like, attacked Thomas. So it's like, why would Stuart's dad help you hide (laughs) Thomas's body uh, (laughs) when you supposedly were going to try and kill his son? Maybe that's what you said. Yeah. That doesn't add up. (laughs) No, I thought it was so strange. (laughs) um then another thing was that alan said that he had been ordered to kill by akasha who was appearing before him in like hallucinations and that she was promising him immortality um so he said to at court quote at the end of the day i knew i would have to murder somebody anyway so if you did not murder somebody you could not become a vampire um so that's kind of like the there's third. so many different ways you could become a vampire we went over this <laughs> i know right i thought it was kind of funny <laughs> um, uh, get a cat do you already have a grave no okay well <laughs> we'll try some other stuff um, uh although they did yeah. say pre- some committing terrible crimes that was one of them on the list oh uh, yeah yeah <laughs> sorry um he also told the court quote i could never get the thought of being a vampire out of my mind uh to put it bluntly after i had seen the tape so many times i wanted to go out and murder people um he also believed that imbibing the blood of his victims made him a vampire and sealed his pact with akasha so like he kind of said three different motives right like they were gonna attack and kill him 
oh, I got told to by Akasha, and right. oh, he insulted the movie. So, like, which one is it? You've now said three things in court. <laughs> like, yeah. The- <laughs> yeah. It's like, what's going on? It's not and then you see a good liar. <laughs> no, like, it's so bizarre. I don't get it. Or maybe he doesn't even really know exactly. I don't know. Because they, they do end up getting three psychiatrists uh, to sit with him and everything. And these three psychiatrists end up testifying in court that Alan's psychopathic disorder was not a mil- mental illness and that it wouldn't or and that it shouldn't be used to reduce his sentence or uh he shouldn't be held in like diminished responsibility so hmm. like yeah yeah they cited that Alan, he knew what it was wrong i would yeah, yeah. It sounds like and then they also pointed out that Alan had a history of enjoying violence and sadism because at 14, he had actually been sentenced to three years in a young offenders institute after he stabbed a fellow school- schoolmate in an unprovoked attack in a school corridor. Uh, he had attacked oh, the schoolmate shit. with a nine inch hunting knife uh, and Ooh. had left him with... Yeah, like left them with a two inch scar. So, oh my God. And yeah, that was him at 14. So, like, why would you not think he was gonna, like, was there no follow up treatment? Was he not seeing a psychologist or anything after this? Like, I find that really mm. weird. But maybe we didn't have those kind of things set up back in 2002. They just like, we're like, oh, he did his three years at the Young Offenders Institute. Now he's all cured goodbye. Um, yeah, well, there's a whole thing about, yeah, how much of it is really about rehabilitation versus um, yeah. retribution, as some say. Yeah, but yeah, that is definitely a right? pattern, like a uh, couple of violent instances. Yeah, and they're both like very violent. Like that was a nine inch hunting knife that he had. Uh, at school it was in a school yeah. corridor that he brought this knife so yeah definitely was something going on but again there's a lot of information that's like missing from this case the everything kind of talks about the few say few like things but yeah well, there's we could, there's a whole thing we could definitely get into about how it's difficult to prevent uh, violence in schools, especially gun violence. It seems in our, our yeah. neighboring country, especially, but oh, just so sad. Um, yeah, this I thought was a little weird. One of the sources said that after the attack, Alan had fled to his grandmother's home. And that upon his appearance and how he was acting, she had locked him in a room and called the police. Um, oh. which I don't really believe that because the attack supposedly happened on December 11th, but he wasn't even questioned by the police until January. So, like, I don't know what's going on there. Huh. Um, yeah, I thought that was okay. a little strange. Doesn't quite make sense. Um, or, like, she but called yeah, 911 and then maybe it didn't really know. lead to anything. Something? Or- yeah, maybe. Um, but they kind of pointed to that long history. He had a, a long history of being interested in like dark themes and macabre stuff and uh, vampirism. Gordo, you're pushing the laptop. I, want to I be saw him do that. Yeah, so they, I think this was the psychologist. Uh, they said it was extremely unlikely that he suffered from the paranoid schizophrenia. And more likely that he had just some sort of anti-personality disorder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All those ones we like to throw around these days. Like, uh, it's not as it, not bipolar, but borderline personality and all those yeah. other fun terms. Interesting. So, yeah, after the jury kind of heard everything and the court heard all these reports um they did about an hour and a half of deliberation and the jury reached a unanimous guilty verdict and then the judge Mm -hmm. ended up stating that for some reason this made me think of um who was it ted bundy (laughs) 
Maybe. Like, uh-huh. The evil whatever, blah, blah, blah. The title oh, of the... awful and whatever, blah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, said that he was... Alan was an evil, violent, and highly dangerous man not fit to be at liberty. Um... Mm. And then he well, was quoted, okay. the judge was quoted saying, to bring about his death, you engaged in a savage and merciless attack involving gratuitous and sustained va- violence of a most horrific nature. Yeah, not untrue. <sighs> right? Yeah. Uh, Alan was found guilty of murder and was sentenced to a minimum of 18 years. Um, wow. Not okay. much, I guess guess um but like it was savage yeah like i'm glad it was just the one but it it was yeah it's bad yeah (laughs) um there isn't a whole lot about his time in prison or whatever but Uh, said that alan stated that akasha continued to visit him after he killed thomas um but he was trying to reject her demands that he kill other people um, oh. Yeah. Okay. So he's still not really getting any help for this mental yeah, problem. Yeah. It have. said. Yeah. It said he also said that she visited him in Carstairs, the facility he was a patient at. So he might have been um, hmm. getting because they said he was in a state hospital at some point. Um, oh. Okay. Yeah, but then he didn't sound like it was going great because he also um was was noted that he stated that he was disappointed that there was no other vampires in the state hospital he was at so like there's no other vampires in the committed facility with me i thought that was oh my gosh i'm so confused is he always in these delusions or Right. It's like, if like, he is, then why is he just okay to be in the general prison population? Yeah, well, I think he was in some sort of state yeah. hospital at some point, but I don't know mm-hmm. if he was necessarily um, committed there immediately or if he had spent time in prison. Um, Damn. Yeah. Um, even more, I guess, unfortunate ending is after just being in like a facility for maybe a a little over a year or so um a spokesperson for the scottish prison confirmed that alan menzies had died while in custody um and they said that he had taken his own life and had they had confirmed he'd been found dead in his cell oh wow and that's kind of like where it ends and then i think because of that like there isn't really any updates no like extra information or anything you can really find about this case since 2004 because yeah yeah so there's never really been any follow-up or like kind of stuff no people talking yeah like um thomas's family or anything speaking Mm. about it um yeah well yeah that's kind of i guess once like the killer's dead then people are like yeah don't have to concern themselves with it or think about it as much anymore it seems like he's not a threat anyway but. yeah but i i find it interesting because there are a number of other cases where like people just get so obsessed with like one thing and then mm-hmm. how that can um like, not that it encourages them, but it almost, like, warps their mind or something. Like, watching, I think, anything a hundred yeah. times would probably distort it or it's something. It's weird because he, like, almost did directly attribute it to watching the movie a lot, which you don't see a lot in these cases where they just, they try to connect it. Like, the, yeah. oh, the one I was talking about with the natural born killers and then... Mm -hmm. you know they were like oh it glorified violence so much that all these people went out and did the same thing and it's like yeah but well like people go out and kill people it doesn't mean it's directly linked for a movie but then it was weird how he said like 
almost that it was directly linked from watching the movie yeah. a lot and the movie was telling him to do it the movie character or whatever yeah whatever i feel like how he yeah. wished like he hadn't seen it i yeah. like it i i think it'd be interesting to try and figure out like if somebody like if he hadn't been exposed to the movie maybe things would have turned out differently or, or if it would have been some trigger, maybe. Yeah. yeah, or something else would have pushed him, and that's what he would have yeah. seen that would have been, like, telling him to do something violent. Yeah, another sexy vampire lady. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and, like, a, when I kept looking at the pictures, um, for some reason it was reminding me of, like, Princess Leia's bikini in Star Wars. So, oh my god the it's iconic very, outfit it's like swirly and gold and i was like oh that just looks oh, like her bikini yeah, too i was like what was going on this decade that like it's freaking uh yeah. you know the butt floss the whale tail a lot of things yeah. <laughs> the low cut jeans <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh it was a time um yeah, yeah. <laughs> no yeah. that's really fucking sad it and there's cases where there's just a complete mental breakdown like that, whether or not it involves a a trigger that, that, you know, happens to involve a movie. Like, I don't know why I was thinking about the case that happened um, in the prairies here where the guy went mental on a Greyhound bus and said that God was talking to him and to cut oh, off yeah. the head of the guy beside him or whatever. And like, now yeah. I think he's completely like, no, that was pretty crazy, but I'm fine now. And you're like, okay, good. <laughs> like, but yeah, I think he's snapped. even been released. Like, Maybe. I don't think he's in custody or anything anymore. But but people, some people clearly need medication. Yeah, and you're like, you just hope that they can get it before it it hurts someone else. Yeah, I think it just goes to show like how serious. Me- mental health really can be and how Mm -hmm. yeah how How serious you have to yeah yeah and how serious you need to treat it if you think somebody's having problems like yeah yeah yeah. people need community too but although some of it goes down to like what does amanda always say on wine and crime like if you have an illness it's not your like fault but it is your responsibility because you got to manage it like yeah but people also need help. <laughs> they need community. They need, I don't know. I don't know. What would have helped this guy? <laughs> Something. Right? Some. I feel like if this kind of thing was going on now, maybe people would have noticed the signs. Maybe. Um, or something yeah, before we're, then. But we're yeah, getting back better. in 2002. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, damn. Well, it's just like, we both woof. 2002 it's so crazy though it that is a while ago the book i um just got done reading uh was about someone um transitioning uh, of male to female in like it was written in 2000 and i was like oh, oh okay we still like a very one of my favorite authors so it ended up it's called trans sister radio which i thought was just a stupid pun but it did have to do with trans <laughs> but yeah. at the time as as good of a you know he's a great writer and everything but um they still uh kept referring to them as transsexuals throughout most of the the book oh and yeah I like, oh i think that was maybe that i guess was more the the term like transgender didn't really it came up in the book like once or twice but it's just crazy how much things can change in like 20 yeah 20 some years where you're like wow that was so different back then or like we have come a long way with this one thing <laughs> or whatever yeah Crazy. yeah yeah good book <laughs> anyway uh that was a crazy story and i'm not okay yeah. and i need to right go get a refill and contemplate that and we'll be right back <laughs> yeah Grab your marshmallows and sleeping bags for the Burnt Marshmallows podcast, where cozy mysteries come alive around the crackling campfire. Picture yourself wrapped in a warm blanket, sipping hot cocoa 
as we share spooky tales that will whisk you away to a world of mystery, ghosts, and perhaps even an occasional monster. Crime-solving spirits, urban legends, Bigfoot, we've got it all. Join Burnt Marshmallows every Tuesday, wherever you listen to podcasts for cozy mysteries. Um, Zach Baggins museum ticket the other day <laughs> tucked away in a bag. Nice. I guess we got a big sticker. Did you get one of those? Yeah, I have one uh, on the wall here. Nice. Pat was trying to get me to uh, put my, he's like, we could rearrange the, the room there and put the desk in the closet. I was like, that's how Kelsey records the <laughs> desk in the closet. <laughs> Was both recording us closets. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just because it's a small room here, and I don't know, <laughs> get the bed in it and everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know how your mic is, but I have it set so that it only picks up audio coming from the front of it. Um, uh... because it does when we were recording. Uh, before I had my mic when we were using the phone our phones i think for (laughs) sure definitely hear it was really bad echoing off the walls oh totally anything on a phone is (laughs) not your high quality for sure (laughs) but yeah but yeah mine doesn't have any i don't know front facing capabilities but it looked fancy so who knows it's hard to tell be a good mic <laughs> i saw some like crazy looking ones uh when we were at best buy looking for father's day gift or not father's day gift for dad's birthday right I was, like right. looking at the shelf i was like damn these are like crazy i was like yeah. oh well, i'll know like if if this one craps out or whatever i can just go there and re- get one <laughs> they have that professional look to them like the, yeah like, I don't know. <laughs> the microphone lines <laughs> the metal ones yeah yeah well these oh, ones so were cool. all still kind of like the desktop ones like mm-hmm. i like this one because i can uh just tuck it in the drawer and then i don't worry about like gordo getting at it or knocking it over or anything trying to play with it so. yeah and yours yeah even though it doesn't move around and mine i can adjust on the arm thing it's like it never so if anything yours sounds like you're closer to the mic than mine does <laughs> it's weird yeah uh, i think it just depends i think it probably gets moved in a little bit different of a spot every time <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> uh. well it i was saying to you i guess pre-recording that um mine was a bigger case than I thought I was taking on, but we (laughs) will adjust the uh, recording lengths accordingly. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to have to split it. Yeah. (laughs) There's probably going to be a part two, but um, our mind's more based on, it's um, a crime that occurred that then a horror movie was based off okay so, yeah yeah cool That's we like... each went one way <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you started telling yours i was like wait is this gonna be like <laughs> like mine is <laughs> i was like okay because like the based on a true stories they can be so loose and stuff yeah it's hard to tell um definitely As it was with this one. I didn't know. And then I didn't know if we covered it. Um, But it's. uh, It's going to be called. The Gainesville Student Murders. Or it's also often called. The Gainesville Ripper. But they. Locally prefer the student murders. To put the focus on the victims. I believe I read. Yeah. (laughs) I mean Ripper just doesn't sound great. Compared to student (laughs) murders. So. I know what earns you the title of Ripper status. I mean, there are it's multiple like victims. Disemboweling? I don't know. 
Uh, going um, back to Jack yes. The There's going to be trigger warnings for, um, you know, gruesome details and also, unfortunately, like um, child abuse and uh, oh, child okay. violence, too. Yay! So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Got to give the trigger warning for that for you guys. I think when you had asked me if you, we had covered the case, I was. I think I had told you that I recognized the name, but I didn't yeah. really think I had heard about the case, and I didn't recall like anything. I looked because I was yeah. like, "This sounds so familiar that maybe she co- like maybe you covered it." I was like, "Or else I've heard it on." at least one other podcast because there were details that sounded super familiar yeah um but what it uh like yeah it's not a spoiler what it's it's the one that it loosely inspires the scream movies or the original scream anyway was like okay damn Um, apparently yeah that's why it's like you think you know like do i know this one (laughs) huh Hmm. Um. I think what it's is it Gainsboro is the town name in Scream. Like it's a similar oh, name, even. Yeah. Shit. I think so. And then, and then the stab movie is within their, or yeah, the stab <laughs> movie is within the Scream movies. This inspired stab. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. They. That they really were literal. <laughs> no. Yeah. I guess I never I mean, really thought of that. <laughs> like, it's they're not really like touted as being based on a true story, and there's not no a ton of like similar details. I think it's mostly okay. because little little things <sighs> they pulled. I guess. Yeah, yeah, college okay. towns, college kids, that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, it uh, starts with a man named Danny Rawling. I just realized now that I'm not sure if that's exactly how it's pronounced, but when it sounds right, rolling, rolling, like a ball rolling down a hill, I would expect that's how it's pronounced, but then I just second guessed myself immediately off the top, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but not spelled like J.K. Rowling. <laughs> oh, okay. Rowling. Uh, yeah, Can we we'll start calling so. her she who shall not be named? Oh, no. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Well, that's, well. <laughs> that sucks, but yeah. <sighs> so, he was born on May 26, 1954 in Shreveport, Louisiana to uh parents claudia and james um the his father james was an officer of the law and uh you know that could usually be a good thing but no not in this case (laughs) sometimes they can be a a tough parent i think to have probably pretty strict and yeah (laughs) oh for sure and it's uh something that's been noted you know in other cases where it's like oh if there's signs of abuse people will often um ask or if if it's common if it's you know get a spouse who's in the military or a cop that it's more likely that there's abuse which is sad but just apparently statistically who knows who knows about these statistics i haven't looked them up i shouldn't just spout these things (laughs) that's a problem you guys (laughs) (laughs) we just all keep perpetuating these things but in this case he was abusive so again with the um trigger warnings so uh a little bit of that uh his dad just bad didn't want kids and um this is oh shit gross he uh started young beating danny apparently at the age of one for not crawling properly Oh my god. That's pretty bad. That's about as bad as... <sighs> yeah. I had to read to get through this. Yeah, that was pretty horrible. <sighs> and the poor mother, she did try to get away, but oh, that must have been rough, knowing that it's going to start that soon. 
when what year was this again when did you say he was born uh 54 okay yeah yeah my parents age um thankfully they didn't get beaten too hard or i wouldn't be as smart as i was (laughs) no it's horrible um the abuse then worsened uh because he had a baby brother born and i don't know why but that made the abuse worse when brother kevin was born but thankfully there are more no more um intimate details about that abuse yeah uh but it's rough it's a rough upbringing anyway as you know tends to happen sometimes with them uh claudia the mother tried to leave him but many (sighs) tried to leave him many times but was unable to do so successfully anyway um poor danny failed the 50s there's like no support for women (laughs) Yeah, yeah. <laughs> D- divorce is hardly a thing. Like it's rough. Yeah, where's she gonna go? People can joke about hitting their wives, and nobody bats an eye because that's mm. your wife. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Like, yeah, no, I think it was probably still legal to to like rape your wife or whatever. Not saying that everybody yeah. did it, but yeah, yeah, not great. <laughs> um. Poor Danny failed third grade due to many absences. And then around that time, she uh, had a mental breakdown of sorts. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't. It's just bad. Um, yeah, the school said he, uh, Danny was troubled, uh, specifically suffering from an inferiority complex with aggressive tendencies and poor impulse control. Huh. Um, I mean... Yeah. So they see that there's something wrong already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He did find some solace and comfort in music at the age of 11, um, trying to like play around on a guitar and singing and stuff. So that was one nice outlet for him. But at this was a really bad point for his mother, a really low point, unfortunately. She was then admitted to the hospital after trying to cut her wrists at one point. Jeez. Sorry. Trigger warning. Should have been also, you know, all of the things. Yeah. Um, he must have, like, the husband must have definitely, like, been something going on with him and the wife, too. Pretty severe. Oh, exactly, right? Like, abusing your vulnerable kid. He's obviously abusing her in some way too if yeah only like i'm gonna you know hurt our kid if you don't do what i want or whatever yeah um he became danny became dependent on drugs and alcohol fairly young uh at 14 he was caught staring in the neighbor girl's bedroom and well that's not great his father then beat him for that also um any yeah. excuse any excuse right like yeah staring in the neighbor girl's yeah window not good but like not crawling properly because you're like a one-year-old also so like i don't know what you're doing yeah. guy can't um, do anything right that's the point no <laughs> can never do anything oh. right or and like like head trauma can we say maybe absolutely if you're doing <laughs> it at one years old uh, yeah. yeah um he started going to church and looked for a job i expect anything to get him out of the house at this point um joined the military uh <laughs> what did i say one of the other professions if they say you're yeah maybe an abuser but not necessarily. That's shouldn't disparage <laughs> my yeah. spouse's Yeah, but to get away. Yeah, but to get away, and then at least somebody's gonna provide for you. You're gonna have food. Yeah, like stability for sure. Structure. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. Um, it's not a like they you know <laughs> almost act like it's something you know put them in a scared straight school like send them to the military it's like <laughs> it's not gonna fix everybody but you know <laughs> no it's Might like it, um when the temperatures get really cold and some people uh 
that don't have any place to live and stuff will commit crime and try and get uh, uh, get sent to prison for the winter so they don't freeze to death like sure so at least yeah. they have something to keep themselves alive if they have no one to help them like, like a crime of necessity almost yeah, yeah so sad not a great look especially when like <laughs> when, what a hundred years ago putting people in jail for being uh on the streets for being vagrants for being yeah homeless children <laughs> like it's like come full circle where they're like yes put me in jail because at least it's warm and better yeah. now than it was then and the uh, than the streets oh yeah anyway. Um, so he did, yeah, join the military, uh, not the Navy. They didn't want him. So he joined the Air Force instead. <laughs> Damn. Navy's like, no, no, we're good. <laughs> I don't know. Something about all the different factions too, like, um, Air Force, Navy, yeah. regular military. They all like have opinions on each other. I've learned from being with someone who's ex-military <laughs> like there's there's classism <laughs> oh damn or whatever yeah there is in everything <laughs> exactly mr ballin he does really you know good um true crime stories and he's building his empire now and he's he was an ex navy seal yeah he talked about it, it was Ooh, that's some rigorous training, I tell you. Yeah, I was <laughs> gonna say Navy SEAL is like that's shit. Like that's crazy. Elite. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um okay, so yeah, Navy doesn't want this guy. He joins the Air Force. Uh, but they also don't love it when you're also high on LSD all the time, so he ends up leaving oh. there too. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> He's an interesting character. Yeah, if you're going to be in charge of anything to do with, like, planes, flying them, or refueling, or maintenance, like, you can't be doing drugs. Right? (laughs) Any part of this cog in the wheel, yeah, you don't want them high on the job, on as is, especially. Yeah, not on as (laughs) Is this a plane or a purple dragon? That's different when you're still in your first job. (laughs) Mine was McDonald's. And yeah, some people said they come in when they were still high on some different (laughs) psychotropic whatever. But (laughs) stick your hand in the air fryer. No, (laughs) at least you're you're probably only going to hurt yourself at least. (laughs) They're probably just going to stand there in front of the drink machine too long. (laughs) yeah oh god oh so okay yeah he's joined joined and left the air force he got married uh, around 19 or 20 because it didn't last long by age 23 after about four years they said he was getting divorced as he was constantly threatening her her life his wife's life well yeah, look at what yeah. kind of relationship example he had. Mm. Good mm. point. Yeah. Um, not a good role model he had, no. No. I mean, I'm sure his mom was doing the best she could, it sounded like, but yeah. Yeah. He doesn't take the divorce well, surprise, surprise, and... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unfortunately begins to take it out on women he encounters so this is the escalation where then he sexually assaults his first woman and she looked a lot like his ex apparently Hmm. i mean it's just not getting any better um he actually then kills his first woman but by accident I don't even okay. have. It was a tra- it was a car accident, so like okay. I don't know. So not I don't know super how that directly. affected his psyche. No, like, but like it's just so weird that he's already starting to ramp up. Like he's already yeah. done a violent crime. Yeah, and now he's taken a life. But 
I don't think he was drunk. I think it was just an accident. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But then did they say, that. sorry, did they say anything no. about like his brother? Was his brother, like, was he getting abused or He doesn't anything? ever come up that I could find yeah. again. Interesting. Um, and as you know, I was still, even as I was typing my notes, actually, I was still like, oh, I'll look up a bit more. And, oh, my God. Yeah, I got to have a bit more details on these people. And But, like, yeah, I couldn't find much more about his brother. Hmm. Interesting. Yet, anyway, maybe something else will come up. Um, he starts committing a bunch of sort of, like, petty crimes, but then escalating to, like, robberies and then armed robberies. So it's ramping up in that degree also. Um, he does time in Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, and Alabama. Really making the oh, rounds. Geez. Yeah, he's moving around. <laughs> yeah, like, he's committing some minor crimes anyway. Um, it said, one one source said that he broke out a couple times. Don't have more information on that, but... Okay. He's a wily coyote, I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, he's getting a few jobs, losing a few jobs uh sometimes like one job he lost set him off in quite a rage uh i think he was living with his parents and at the time and i i think they probably noted that um and just around this very time there had been three bodies that were found in shreveport louisiana in a, one single family home um hmm. So this was 24-year-old Julie Grissom, her father Tom Grissom, and her 8-year-old nephew Sean. Jeez. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Um, and yeah, William Tom Grissom, Grissom, I think it's Grissom. There's no age. <laughs> but it said he was 55, divorced, was an AT&T supervisor who lived on Beth Lane in Shreveport's Southern Hills neighborhood. He was described as being polite, friendly, and respectable, and had been bat battling throat cancer for years, but was doing better. He was also nearing retirement. Oh. Oh my god. So. No! Fucking tragic. It's like We're every movie. Cancer. It's yeah. every movie ever where they have a cop <laughs> or somebody that says, I retire next week, today, this is oh, the last no. case, blah, blah. You're like, this they person's going to die. <laughs> they have to. They aren't not going to die. And how near was he? 55? Well, that's good. You, that's retiring early, really. Yeah, I mean, he's been battling throat cancer for years. Fucking hell. <sighs> True. <sighs> yeah, life's too short, man. Ugh, that <sighs> sucks. I can't believe I just said that, but yeah. Oh, it sucks. Um, but again, there was, this just reminds me why I was like, I can't just gloss over, like, victims in this just because there's multiple ones. It's like, I want to hear yeah. more about them, just their, like, names. Yeah. So this is really sad. It's almost like a, <laughs> not quite a family annihilation, but it's three members of the same family. Um... So him, he, uh, William goes by Tom, whatever. And then Julie, his daughter, the 24 year old who had been studying marketing at Louisiana state university of Shreveport. That's a mouthful. <laughs> I had to keep going back and being like, what is it called? L S U S. <laughs> oh, I hate abbreviations. Oh. Just terrible ones that don't, roll off the tongue yeah like at work my department because we're vehicle registration auto renew they call it the VRAR <laughs> the VRAR like, that's not <laughs> that's better be not a, a... T-Rex RAR <laughs> right VRAR <laughs> the Velociraptor <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay sorry uh 
And the third victim, Sean, a third grader at Turner Elementary, was visiting his grandpa and aunt for his um, birthday weekend, basically. Oh, of course. You know, he had been uh, scheduled to come home that Monday, November 6, 1989, but never made it. <sighs> his mother was frantic when her calls went unanswered at her father's house and no one at his school uh sean's school had seen him either so then police asked the neighbors of um the what was her last name again grisham's grisham's sorry uh if they could check on the family see if their door was unlocked see if they were okay Uh, i'd be like no sorry i think you guys can come check (laughs) I know, 2024, like, fuck no, what are you talking about? You come here, you're the police. I'm, <laughs> I'm not seeing a dead body come do your fucking job, do a wellness check on this eight-year-old. Thank you. No, because you don't know what they're, exactly, yeah, they didn't know. Uh, um, But yes, exactly, at 8.45 a.m., the poor neighbors, unsuspecting neighbors, discovered the first body. Yeah, traumatized them for life, thank you very much. I know, hopefully they didn't have a small child with them. (laughs) They cracked open the laundry room door. They saw a slumped figure they couldn't even really recognize and got right out of there. And it turns out that figure was William, who was slumped up against the utility room door and kind of blocking it. He had been stabbed in the chest and back uh, not long after he'd just been outside just grilling some steaks. Damn. Ugh, you're never safe. Um, little Sean was found face down in the living room with one stab, stab wound straight through his back and it actually exited his chest. Jeez. Yeah, that was rough. Oh my god. Like, he kills an eight-year-old. He has no enemies. Yeah. He was attacked while he was just watching TV also. It's just really sad. Um, Quote, Julie's body was found naked and partially hanging off a bed. She was stabbed at least three times in the back, but was left facing up. And vinegar was then applied to her body. Um, Oh, to clean it? Yeah. Yeah. They used to... People used to use vinegar a lot to clean houses. Yeah, and I think he uses some other stuff later on, too, to try and clean. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It said that evening she was planning to go out to a high school friend's... Did I read this? Okay. Yes. This... That evening she was planning to go out to a high school friend's wedding and had picked out a red dress. I forgot she was 24. Sorry. (laughs) Um... Detectives believe the trio was killed around 6 to 8 p.m. the Saturday before their bodies were found. So, they were confused. The police were, yeah, stunned. No clear motive. Obviously, like I just said, no enemies, for especially for a child. And, like, all yeah. three of them. Yeah, it's... It's bizarre. Uh... They didn't have much to go on. Within a week, they're getting sort of a profile. They believe they were dealing with a psychologically disturbed person with probable prior crimes under their belt. Yeah, I mean, taking down three people is not something you typically start off with. Yeah, and I just don't know how exactly it really happened still. Because you're right, three people, well, at least two adults, like, I don't know. Yeah, even if you're surprising them, if you know three people are in the house, you normally wouldn't, that wouldn't be your first pick. Yeah, and there's, it's not like, with a gun, it's easier to shoot people from far away. I don't know, they're all, they're stabbed. Yeah. It's it's up close and personal. Um and now people were really terrified in the area, especially those who lived near or on Beth Lane, where these murders occurred. Excuse me. Um, that kind of thing just didn't happen there. You know, always is the case, but. Yeah. 
um, yeah, shook the place up, and it would be quite a while before they had any answers or real relief. Um, meanwhile, Danny is pissed about his life, his recent job loss, and uh, one day in May 1990, he just takes it out on his poor father, who he was living with, and he shot his 58-year-old father in the face. Well, yeah, I'm going to feel bad about that one. <laughs> it's not cool, buddy. Especially when the argument reportedly began when Roll- Rowling's father told him to roll up his car windows because it was raining. Roll it up, okay. Rowling! <laughs> just that's roll a, it up! That's a little stupid. He was probably just trying to help. <laughs> That's like, oh, wow. Well, this guy that, is, that insane. is something really weird to <sighs> kill somebody. Right? I know there's like all the history and everything, but for that to be the thing that like finally set it off, that like that was the moment. That's so bizarre. true. Oh my God. By the time I get around Not... to the father thing, I forget that he's been abusing him for all those years. Honestly, I do. I yeah, feel like. like it wasn't, oh. oh, he was yelling at you because you lost your job, calling you no. an idiot or something. It was literally, hey, it's raining outside. Maybe you should roll up your window. Right. Oh, oh my God. It's like an Ed That's Kemper word. so weird. Yes. Kemper's mother kept like telling him how much yeah. she hated him or all, his whole life because he was like his father. And No, you're yeah. right, though. Yeah. It's like the last straw. Yeah, it was but, so weird. Yeah, like, no, he's obviously fucked up because his dad has been abusing him since he was a literal baby. Yeah, his brain cannot be properly developed at all. There's, I'm sure, yeah, some definite uh, factors, phys- physiological and otherwise. Yeah, it's like, oh. Yeah. Nature and nurture was going against him. Um, don't, so yeah, like I said, I had to kind of decide or like write as much as I can to get our thing done tonight, but because we were originally going to record another episode, but, um, okay. So where we'll wrap this one up. His father survived. He ended up losing one eye and one ear, but lived. Ugh. Um, yeah. I don't want him but, in the world either. They both suck. I know. <laughs> I know. I literally, oh my God, it's, I can't believe I kept forgetting. Because it's just like, that's so horrible. But it's like, also, you're probably part of the reason why he's making yeah. these terrible monstrosic monster choices, whatever. Um, so Dan, Danny fled, stopping only to steal some ID cards, ID cards or papers of some sort, something identification wise from a nearby Mm. house, like down the street. Um, and then he headed off to like Sarasota. So he's going to Florida. He's on the run. Who knows what's going on in his head? He's got this alias paper saying he's Michael Kennedy Jr. And uh, it's been like six months since the uh, Grissom murders. And although no more murders occur in Shreveport and nothing else really kind of happens there uh, or until August of 1990, that's when another attack occurs which is on August 24th uh, when two university students from Gainesville, Florida were killed in their home in another brutal and violent double homicide. Damn. And that's where I'm going to have to leave it. (laughs) Oh no, a cliffhanger. A very big cliffhanger because that's all I got right now. There was too much more. I think that's like the most cliffhanger we've ever left to part one at. (laughs) Wow. You literally told me the headline of a case and then we're like, and that's it. (laughs) And we aren't even able to record Lots of times when we split an episode, we're like, oh, we're going to keep recording so I don't have to wait. But this one, I actually have to wait. (laughs) I know. I have nothing else right now. I'm like, 
maybe we could try to have the rest of it before. I don't know, man. Damn. We were just picking. We were just picking the next topic. We're also working on like a a, a guest collab. episode. Yeah, so we don't know what's <laughs> exactly gonna come out next. Well, I guess no. I'll have to. I can't just like stop this one and then be like, and then we'll have an episode in between. Like that'd be we mean. We could, but. <laughs> <laughs> i think we did that with Imagine. one of our aliens episodes or something one of the first that was like back the first year oh, though really? we we kept it with our <laughs> true crime paranormal true crime paranormal and i think we made them wait two weeks <laughs> oh i don't recall We've done some <laughs> yeah damn oh yeah well it's, uh, you know, people in the future, they're like, yeah, I just fast forward 30 seconds. I'm going to listen to the next episode right now. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, hey, hey suckers. <laughs> yeah, you guys are acting like it's such a big deal. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no. We'll try not to break wow. it up with another one in between. <laughs> and on that and- note, we're taking the next month off. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. I know. I know. Sometimes we randomly have to take the yeah the episode here or there where we're like shit <laughs> i don't think we're gonna have anything you don't want to rush anything just to get it out on time mm. that's the thing no and <laughs> i feel like more often than not i'm closing all the time now so mm. yeah, yeah i have I'm no evenings to work on anything and then i only have a <laughs> few hours before work and that's basically just I don't know, maybe having an hour to myself and then getting ready for work. So, oh gosh, like, yeah, no you spare need that fucking hour. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, no spare time to do anything on days I'm closing. No, even yeah, even getting the work done at the be- like, you get home it's like six six thirty when I get home or whatever, and then I'll be like, I don't have the energy to work on something else right now. Yeah. Sometimes don't yeah it's uh you guys get it you know (laughs) work-life balance but but it's like work (laughs) work life balance (laughs) oh yeah and i was um helping rain get through uh because i signed my daughter up for like a learner's license prep course and then yeah providing feedback on it to like for the company to be like yeah this was helpful (laughs) And it was like, it was under a deadline. And I was going, oh, damn it. <laughs> Should have got you started on this earlier. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, oh. <laughs> but she was she was really good about it. So I told her I'd buy her Dairy Queen today. And then we did. And who knows? <laughs> Maybe she'll pass her learner's license. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys get I'll- it all finished in time then? um yes <laughs> yeah. i didn't i didn't get a, her to finish each and every module so i had to do like the last couple ones myself because i was like we signed up for it you know we got to do the thing and at least provide the feedback because it's basically like your beta testing right like they want yeah. you to see, say if there's any kinks or anything so you're like oh i said i'd do it and i got the material for free so i'll do it but no i think it'll probably help like i was telling nice. you like it yeah, the learner's test cool. is a lot of information, so it can be helpful. It's just very to, like, dry yeah. and boring, yeah. <laughs> and I feel like it discourages a lot of people from actually, like, going Driving. for the test, because you're just like, yeah. here's a book, now study it, and you're just like, this is the last thing I want to do. Exactly. And then, like, I'm visual, too, so when it's yeah. just like, do this, do that, it was nice to kind of have some, like, videos i thought even though i'm like i know how to do this stuff now but then like to help your kid through it and stuff it was kind of nice yeah yeah um nice yeah drive safe everybody no (laughs) but like i keep being like it'll make you feel more comfortable so you're ready to actually practice and you need to have an id and all these other reasons why you are 17 so go get your license already no (laughs) there was somebody i think at my work we were they didn't have a receipt and we asked for like photo id and it can't be expired or anything and there was Mm. a lady she had 
no photo ID. Her ID had expired None. seven years before. She Whoa. didn't have a passport. And I was like, she's like, I don't know, in the last seven years, I haven't needed it. And I was like, really? Like, what the fuck have you been doing for, <laughs> for seven why? years? That nobody, even a bank, nobody's ever asked you for ID in seven fucking years? Like, Oh my no. gosh, yeah. That's insane. Like, Are you unhoused? Like, yeah. you have a job? like what's going on ma'am have you what is your life store to buy liquor and someone said do you have your id like yeah yeah it was crazy to me i was like this is insane like what's even happening right now it's crazy how people get through life and oh one time just after covid or something and someone's in line to do something at the registries there and they're going well what what my driver's license do i have that with me what does it look like (laughs) (laughs) well if you don't know then maybe you shouldn't have one (laughs) yeah the amount of times we ask for the id and people say oh that's at home and you're just like did you drive here and they're like yep and you're like cool that's great good god my head is cocked so far to the side like are you i hope sure? you get a ticket i hope you get pulled over and you get a ticket because oh, that's yes. such a basic thing that you need to have with you like, Ugh, working at a motor vehicle department the amount of times you're like on the phone you're like yeah we couldn't auto renew your plate because apparently the registration has been expired for 12 months so you're telling me i've been driving around on expired registration I guess so. What does your paper say? (laughs) Just because something's on automatic renewal doesn't mean you can just never think about it again. (laughs) And that's that's exactly why mine's not on automatic renewal, because I want to have to check. Every January, I look at the little piece of paper and I go, do I need to worry about this this year? And if I don't, or every year at that same moment, I check my driver's license because it's also in January and I check them both and go, is this a problem I have to deal with this month? No. Okay, cool. Next year, I'll think about it again in January. (laughs) Exactly. Like a responsible owner. And yet sometimes I renew license plates every day. And then what Pat said to me last month that he was like a month overdue. And I was like, oh, I guess. Yep. Your last name starts with E. Uh, yep. Yeah. Well, you're not as bad as some people, which <laughs> are like, a year? <laughs> My but dad. also at... I do it every day and I didn't think to be like, is yours due? <laughs> but... My, uh, <laughs> I think my dad and my brother forgot one year and they asked me in February or March about the registration and they were like hey our registration Oops. was due in January did you do yours because we didn't do ours and I said yeah I did mine <laughs> it was like everybody forgot but me <laughs> I was like oh cool I was like, like I win yeah what's my prize <laughs> I swear to God, I just heard Outlander music from downstairs, but I may be hallucinating. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> She's going crazy. All right. All right well, wow. well, if I put my hands to some stones and I never come back, <laughs> just yeah. know that I enjoyed this podcast. I was going to say, Alana watched Outlander too many times and she thinks she needs to kill somebody so she can g- travel back in time. and <gasps> Blood <you>. sacrifice! <laughs> That'd be <laughs> Gayless Duncan style. Yeah. Um no, but I won't have to sacrifice any goats and it is coming back next month. I get to watch it. Yay! Uh, <laughs> I'm still behind almost a full season, I think. Oh, well at least you won't have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> you won't there will be no drought lander for you. Yeah, that's what you call it. <laughs> I didn't coin the phrase, but I do enjoy it. (laughs) All right. Well. All right. (laughs) uh, Catch back for part two whenever it may drop. (laughs) Yes, we'll catch you next week. Uh, We'll try. We won't leave you hanging with these gruesome, gruesome murders. Yay! Go watch Scream. No. (laughs) (laughs) Who fucking knows? (laughs) Yeah. All right, until next time, keep it cryptic. (laughs) Bye.
Thank you for listening to Castles and Cryptids. We love all our listeners and appreciate every subscriber, every new review, every listen, rate, and download. Our music is by Kobe Off Air, and our cover art is by Antonio Garcia. We are also a proud member of Darkcast Network, where you can find the best and spookiest of all indie podcasts. Follow us on social media, where we are at Castles and Cryptids on mostly all of the things, now including TikTok. Check out our bonus content on Patreon, Cryptid Clashes, video minisodes of your hosts making asses of themselves, Ask Me Anything, quizzes, other special episodes, and more. Starting at just $2 a month, you can get one to two extra episodes, depending on your level. We produce, edit, and research everything ourselves, and any support you can lend helps us to keep it cryptic. I got all my um, witchy books on the coffee table now, because I finally cleaned the under part of it a little bit. The lower shelf mm. of the coffee table. I was like, I can put some of these underneath. <laughs> but I'll keep it like yeah. my witch one, my moon one, like all the like, you know, my ghosty one. And then I found when I was cleaning and then in by the um under the TV where we keep like the um what are they called? Board games. There was a book mm. all about vampire lore. And I was like, why was this in here? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, Pat's like, oh, you didn't know? I was like, well, I don't know. I guess it's just if it was on the coffee table, maybe I would have <laughs> like opened it since we were just doing vampires. But no, I didn't think of looking in. Damn. Here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <It's> ironic. <laughs> yeah, right after you need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, I guess we'll we should start. I didn't waste all my good stories. Yeah. <laughs> It was uh, it was nice editing with the intro and the outro music. I was like, oh, Ooh. Nice. I I didn't have to check what how long our banter was because I was like, oh, there's the intro music. Poof, just like delete all this stuff ahead of it, and was like, bam, here's our episode start. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was nice. It's I was so like, we were like stuff. five or six minutes, I think, into it last time, and I was like, oh sweet, just like click and delete right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> like perfect yes i don't think we said anything too cute although we did say the episode was sponsored by growers <laughs> did we? So, oh i was noticed yeah. you were drinking cider too and i went oh <laughs> yeah Sometimes i clip that I... stuff and put it at the end like as bloopers but <laughs> not oh always. shoot yeah oh, it was it wasn't that funny <laughs> <laughs>